exist in all of us, oh, creating from the vibration that flows within us, a oh, constant, consistent creation, oh, directed by the choices, choices that we make. You have the right to be who you're supposed to be, so what's it going to be? You are the master of your vibration. Feel your mind for elevation. There is no time for contemplation. The time is now. So what's it going to be? Giving thanks for all things great and small. From things that create and sustain my happiness in the form of all experiences, lessons, and gifts, equally positive and perceived negative. We are grateful for people, places, and opportunities being revealed in the opportunity to unlearn habits that no longer serve our highest good. We are grateful for experiences that support new understanding and growth. We give thanks. Calling upon the essence of ancestors and spirit guides that stand beside, behind, and before us leading the way, we summon your presence and grace with wonder in our heart and glory in our mouth. We honor you. We offer our thanksgiving. We offer our body temple. We offer our love and respect. We ask that you guide our thoughts and deeds as appropriate, that our actions reflect the highest good. We pray a yielding spirit to hear your sacred inspiration. We pray a clear mind to acknowledge your inspiration. We pray an undulterated will to fulfill your inspirations. Moving forward in our everyday habits, counting the blessings and the continual support. We thank you for your presence in our lives. Ashe, Amin Ra, Mayat. Ashe, Thank you. Giving thanks and praise, sitting in the seat of thankfulness and gratefulness, sitting in the seat of gratitude. I thank you, our minister, Sister Reddy Sakira, rah, rah, rah. I thank you, our minister, SCG 13, for all that you do and continue to do. I thank you both for giving of yourselves. Service is the highest honor. One of the highest honors and one of our superpowers. Last week we talked about worth. Since I want to continue on worth, but I want to go a little bit deeper than worth and value. I shared a song in the collective called Try a Little Tenderness. And so Mm -hmm. often we're not tender with ourselves. So I did the etymology of the word tender, and it said gentle, kind, and affectionate. Do we give that to ourselves? Have we given that to ourselves? You know, I look back over my life, I can truly say, not all times. 
you know, I kind of share a story because it allows me to be vulnerable, but it also allows everybody else to be vulnerable. You know, in the black community, we have secrets. You know, we don't share because of the secrets. That's destroying us, secrets. Oh, but before we begin that, I found out uh, the name of the book is called The Miseducation of the Negro. Okay. And it shares a sister with a helmet, metal helmet with a lock on it. We have been miseducated. And my vision is for all sisters to have that lock popped. We as sisters, we are educators. We're builders. We're generators. We're radiators. We're keepers. We generate, we create, we radiate. We erect. That's our nature. And we, could, uh, we can come back to that later, but I want to share the story. Um, I got strung out on drugs, but I was a functional addict. I mean, I was going to work, had a job, but I was functional. And I would do primos and smoke the pipe and toot the cocaine and lace it with my marijuana and put it in my cigarettes. And one particular night I did a primo in my bedroom and my sister looked in the window, you know, but, you know, at the time it didn't really matter to me because I needed, you know, to do my fix. And I was, I was stealing from my mother. I, I stole my sister's bank card and she was in the army and I stole from out of her bank account. But not one time did my mother ever, you know, I was, wasn't judged and just, you know, I realized that, you know, that's some big stuff to do that, you know. But when you're uh, <laughs> governed by not wanting to see yourself, not wanting to elevate or change yourself, then that's that mask because you're co hiding and you're coding with a substance to make you feel better in actuality. You won't feel any better because when you come off the high, all your stuff is right there. So I came home from work and my mother told me that her, my son had saw the cocaine on the plate. And it's like something went through me. So that night, mm -hmm. I prayed. And at the time, I didn't know anything about the goddess energy. I just knew God. You know, um, Still in that church phase with JC, but not really believing in JC, but still in that phase. So I had asked the universe, if you take this bitter cup from me, I will serve you for the rest of my life. Next day, about to lose my job, you know, on probation and all of this. I'm in my cafeteria, work cafeteria, and this sister has soft for years. And we just speak, and she would always be joyful and in harmony. So she said, well, can I sit here? I'm like, sure. So she sat down, <clears throat> and we just started talking, and I began to share things with her. And she gave me this tape by Les Brown called Go For It. I played that tape till I broke it. Well, at the time, she was going to um, Christ University Temple with this Johnny Coleman, the, rev the late Reverend Dr. Johnny Coleman. And she invited me to come because she said Les Brown would be there for the next three Sundays. So the Sunday that I got ready to go, my second son had caught pneumonia, so we was in the hospital. And I called. I said, I know you're not going to believe me, but I can't make it because I'm in the hospital. She said, no, no, no. I said, I'll be there the next. And that began to change my life. So I went, and that changed the course of my life. So the reason I'm sharing is not for sympathy or empathy. I'm sharing so that to let sisters know when you see a sister and you think that you perceive that this sister is, you know, all of that or she hasn't been through anything. Yes, she has. Very rarely we come to this realization of spirituality without hitting rock bottom. And if I can pull up, and if I can choose to shift, we all can. I just wanted to share that, you know, so we can treat ourselves better with tenderness. 
Thank you for making this choice. Thanks for the vulnerability and sharing your story. I am Mr. E.I. O.J.M.E. Another thing that came to mind is not only looking at those who have gotten past that and we may not know their story and we may be thinking that they are, are better not knowing what they have gone through to get where they are, but it also places me in the mind of not judging people for where they are because you don't know where they will be, where where their story is, is taking them. Maybe what they call a testimony, as you just told your story, maybe what they are dealing with is in part with their own testi- their own testimony so that they can assist others who have gone through or are going through the same thing. Not to just say like, oh well they're they gone, they you know, they they're doing that so they they far they've been far gone. We, we, we don't, you don't need to give them any information because they're doing drugs. Or, you know, she's sleeping around, so ain't no need to put nothing in her ear because, you know, she's already where she is. Because I feel that in the spiritual so called conscious community, there is a thing where you you look down on other people. And I've always I've always felt that I can do some things so I can be relatable to people. And even though I may have not been through what everybody else has been through to a high degree, I've still been in those areas and those elements in those environments where I have seen a lot, a lot, a lot, a lot. And I've never... I never been like, oh, he's smoking crack. I can't talk to him. He's smoking crack. He ain't on my level. He never smoke crack. I treat people the same. I treat people the same way. If you treat me in some type of way, like respecting me as like a regular person, what you do is really not my business. But me sharing the word or just being kind can keep that person from being too hard on themselves from where they at. And when you talk about a little pain and with the self-worth part, diving deeper into that, we could definitely see that we beat ourselves up. We can we can beat ourselves up for whether it's for the past or I know I'm an overanalyzer. Even after I completed a conversation with somebody. I'm always rewinding it, even through my interactions. I'm like, wait a minute, I should have I should have said that thing. I messed up. I should have said it like this or I should have made this point or oh, I could have did that. Dang, I I messed it up. Or even now we are where I am. Just being too hard on myself. Like I have to come up like you always say, you don't have the perfect diction. It's not necessary. Perfect diction is not necessary to to reach someone, to 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 have someone be able to feel where you're coming from. That is not necessary. And tenderness, gentle, affectionate, especially as women, that helmet that you say on the cover of the book with the lock on it, that has been a main part of our mental lockdown, if you will, feeling that we have to serve someone else before we serve ourselves or we serve somebody else better than we serve ourselves. And just for example, if you like, I like to serve. I like to serve food. I like to prepare plates. I like the plating part. And if I have company and I've cooked something, Oh, everybody's plate is like beautiful. It's all the same food, mind you, but the energy that I put into the plating for someone else is more than I put into the plate for myself. Now, that can either be because I want to hurry up and sit down and eat everybody else, 
Or is this like, I don't need to have a beautified plate. You know, I just got to make sure everybody else plate beautiful. But that's still like, why not serve me the same way I would serve somebody else? Because we've been told that it's better to serve, uh, it's better to give than receive. Mm-hmm. That's what we've been taught. Yeah. I was taught that, you know. And if you go back to uh, SCG 13, free your mind. What's it going to be? How you going to be? You know, validation. Mm-hmm. We seek validation and approval outside of ourselves. We seek it from our parents. We seek it from our sisters, the community, everywhere we go. And when you realize that you're seeking approval and validation and you don't need approval or validation, that's a popping of the lock. Mm. And you can come, you can go inward, go back to that womb. You know, I said that we are erectors and builders and generators and radiators. You know, everybody Mm -hmm. said we carry a radiance. We don't need makeup. We already radiant, but we don't know that we're radiant. We don't know that that glow that you see or that, you know, that drawing mechanism is radiance. Radiators, generators, erectors, creators. Mm-hmm. So, you know, when people go through things, we tend to put um, an honor on to protect ourselves or what we may call on hmm, Here's another word that. Secrets. 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 Yes. I won't even call it a defense mechanism. I just call it that mask. We put that mask on. We don't want people to see who we truly are or what we are, where we've been. Because we've been told that if you... uh, not perfect, or if you don't, uh, you know, if you've done a certain thing, then that's that shame, and that's, you know, we shame, and that's that blame, and, you know, the pointing of the finger, you know, that ridicule that we do in our community. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And another point is we can become hardened in trauma until... And I guess it's the same. It's, it's still like a mask because underneath, that's not who you truly are. But you're wearing, you kind of wearing your your hurt in a way. So you feel you have to, you can't allow others to be in or get in because you're you're, you're afraid of being hurt or being taken the wrong way. Even the how the how a lot of women have gained a lot of masculine energy as a way to protect themselves from being hurt or I don't want to use the word soft but not being gentle with yourself just putting on this hard this hardness like oh no I gotta you know can nobody hurt me I don't let people get to me et cetera et cetera how do we uncover those things by first of all, healing but, oneself. We have mm-hmm. to heal. This is what this is all about, healing. Going in to that root and looking at it and says, okay, I have family issues, I have trust, I have security, and I have safety issues. I don't feel safe. I don't feel secure. I don't trust myself. If you don't trust yourself, how can you trust someone else? If you don't feel safe with yourself, how are you going to feel safe with someone else? If you have family Mm -hmm. issues, then that's going to spill over into everything. So everything starts in our bloodline. You spoke about the ancestors. So whatever's in our bloodline is in us. So generational curses we hear about. Mm -hmm. So when I say our sister's hardened, I don't use the word hardened. 
a lot of times when you are not spiritually inclined or you're not living from your true self, it appears that you're hardened. You're just not hardened. You think that you have to protect yourself. So this is how you think that you should be. Um, you know, I go back to when you were speaking about the sisters who were being masculine. This image flashed uh, of we were slaves on the plantation. And the master would come and get the wife because he wanted to sleep with the wife. Imagine, you know, you got to go sleep with this European, this man. And you got to leave your husband and whatever they want to do to you, you have to do that. And you have to come back. So a lot of that is generational. A lot of things are in our bloodline. And when you're ready to heal, you will. But it takes courage and strength. I go back to courage, strength, and wisdom to say that, you know what? I no longer want to be like this. When my mother told me that my son saw that cocaine on the plate, it was like, oh, oh no, something just was like, uh-uh, uh-uh, I don't have to do this. I didn't go to a, re- I didn't go to a rehabilitation center. I would go to work and come home. I did that for three months. And then I went back around to the place where they were getting high at. And they was like, you know, something like that. And I think about my sister friend that we did it together, you know, and she, it took her years to walk away, you know. So I think when you're ready, when you have a calling, when you know that you have a purpose and a destiny, and when you serve karma at a young age and, you, you know, I went through life. At a young age, 12 and 13, I was hanging out with 16, 17, 18-year-old women. You know, I was doing what they was doing. But there was a greater purpose on my life. So I had to burn off all that karma. You know, and a lot of times when people are going through things, that soul has come to burn off that karma because that soul has, has a great purpose and a destiny. We all have a great purpose and a destiny. But some of us choose our purpose. Some of us choose our destiny where we are called to do things that no one else would do. But we have to want to heal. We have to want to say, you know what, I don't want to continue to live my life like this. I want to change. I want to transform and transmute. I want to be happy. I want to be joyous. I want to be whole. I want to be complete. When you talk about burning off karma, is, what is what does that look like? Is that just living, just living, living life and going through your experiences, like your karma, when you're born, it's already accumulated in a sense, and then once you're going through life's experiences, you're either adding on to that or burning that off. Yes, when you come here from a prior incarnation. All that karma from that prior incarnation, you meet it in this incarnation. Say you meet a sister and there's this friction between you all and you just don't know what it is, right? Mm -hmm. Prior incarnation. Whatever you did in the prior incarnation, you're going to experience it in this incarnation. So to a person who only wanted money in the prior incarnation, they'll probably have money in this incarnation. To the person who only wanted sex in the prior incarnation, they'll probably have a lot of sex in this incarnation. But how you treat people, your thoughts, your words, your actions, and your deeds determine karma. So when I say burn it off, is that uh, for me, when burning off my karma was, also here's another story. I went to the Hebrew Israelites at the age of 14. And I stayed there from 14 till I was 21. So in the last two and a half years of that, you know, we had moved around to different places and I was ready to leave. So I stole the money because I was going to run away. And I never forget, which we call it Shabbat. Shabbat is Friday, Friday evening. Uh, one of the guys opened the door and, you know, I didn't think anything of it, but I guess that it had, he had been revealed to him that I had got the money. So Shabbat night, they came in and they searched. They had the sister to search me and they found the money. On that particular night, my feet were beat with a machete. 
I lived in a closet mm. for two and a half years of my life. So I didn't know if some days if I was at, was going to eat, if I wasn't going to be able to eat. You know, uh, I got beat with tree trunks. Um, I was held up under the water. You know, so what saved me through that was I didn't care what they did to me. I knew I was coming home. And so for every night for the last month and a half, I was just dreaming about my grandfather, just kept dreaming about my grandfather because my grandfather helped my mother raise us when we were living in the South. Uh, so this one particular day they came to me and said, you know, we're going to let you go home because we'll end up killing you. And I was determined to leave. I was, I hadn't been home in, ooh, since I was 14, but I knew how to get back. And, uh, mm -hmm. so I came back and I knocked on the door and I'm telling you, I was a mess. I was, I was just had no life. But I knew mm, that's burning off karma. The greatest sin is the sin is when you go again, when you don't respect your mother, the mothers. That's one of the greatest sins. So that was burning off the karma. That means that when you, whatever you experience is the burning of the karma. And when things don't look like they go in your way, everything is in divine order. Everything is going exactly the way that it should be. So I take no. Nothing for my journey. I was drinking at a young age. I was drinking at 12 and 13 and smoking marijuana, getting high. But I didn't do hard drugs because, like I said, child of molestation, still hadn't healed that. You know, and once my, you know, once I start the healing, because I was ready. And the universe had things for me to do. Mm. Wow. So I was mean, I was angry, I was hateful, I didn't, didn't love myself, hated being a woman, but all of that, you know, I still, like I say, life has a tendency of making you not love yourself, and how you, if you're unhappy, you want the world to be unhappy. So it's not a person, it's hard, it's just a person don't know how to get past their stuff. And it takes someone you know, when you're ready, but you got to be ready. You have to have a made up mind. You have to want it. When you want it bad enough, I never forget Les Brown, go for it. When you're ready to give up your life, when you're ready to want something so bad, you'll do whatever's necessary to get it. Hmm. So I didn't want to be angry anymore. I didn't want to be hateful anymore. I didn't want to be spiteful anymore. And the healing process began. Yeah, I had to make that decision. Mm -hmm. You know, but a lot, of, a lot of us don't know where to go or how to go or how to get there. You know, when at that time there was no uh, internet or, uh, you know, no one wasn't talking about self-help. You know, you had to kind of fret it out. And I went to the black community. Them sisters didn't want to hear about molestation. Like, they don't want to hear about it now. You know, we protect our molesters. We don't talk about it. Once again, secrets. Secrets is killing our community. Secrets. You know, we hold on to our stuff. The vulnerability. Well, I'm being vulnerable right now. I don't need approval. I don't need validation. I don't need nobody to like me. But I can tell a sister if you truly want healing to take place, free your mind. Pop that lock. Because my vision is every sister has no shackles on her mind. Generating, creating, erecting, radiating, keepers. Opening ourselves up to tenderness, validation, worth. And not seeking it outside, but going inward where it is. And that always isn't, uh, as you say, fluffy. <laughs> That's not always a fluff theory. Like, you talked about science. <laughs> and... I find that 
I get some pretty good results if I just have a, if I'm going through something and I have a real good, ugly cry. And I'm talking about some inner things that I know need to be transformed or even the battle was just the, just realizing who I am and defeating this pattern of, of talk that may have come from what I heard as a child that is still kind of running in the background, you know, like, you, 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 well, you can never do that or you won't be able to accomplish that or you can just sit your behind down and just do that because you're not good enough to do that or you're not going to be as good as them or whatever that negative talk was. It's like you, it's like you, you're pulling stuff out of yourself because these things have become a part of who you are as you're growing. And it may not be something that you were out front with, like you said, these secrets, this kind of pushing it under the rug. But when you get to this point where you just had enough and you just want it, like you said, you just want it. You just want the peace. You just want the love from yourself from yourself because you get to a point where you realize like okay so why am I feeling some type of way because I didn't get acknowledged or validated by so and so but did you validate yourself did you big up yourself did you acknowledge your own greatness before you expected it to be acknowledged and seen by somebody else do you have confidence in who you are. I think that's a big thing, being confident about who you are and what you're able to do and not allowing that to be, allowing that to be limitless, not allowing anybody to put a cap on it. Like, yeah, you can do this, but you you can only get so far or you only get so high or however words you want to use to perceive you being as great as who you are. So what I've been well, doing myself. Well, so. Go ahead. Yes, yeah. Real quick, I've, no, I've been ahead. telling Finish. myself. I, I've been telling myself I am greater than I think I am. I am better than I think I am because the mind, oh, the mind is just how you going in the twirl. But your soul, your spirit, is consistent. With who you are, because that's who you are from your your spiritual essence. Right now, the soul is pure, untainted, pure. Now, there's all mm-hmm. kind of spirits out here, and all spirits don't leave here or, or are evolved. So you have to watch that spirit world. But when you connect your mind and your heart together, when you feel, taste, touch, sight, and all that, when you're creating generating, erecting, and building. And not only that, what is your mother conversation with yourself? That means you have to reprogram all of those things that were said to you. You know, I don't want to, I want to say, I don't use the word relearn. You have to relearn self. Mm -hmm. I said, the song that pulled me through was The Greatest Love of All by Whitney Houston. (laughs) I play that song Mm -hmm. every day, all day. I feed my soul with things that are moving upward. I, you know, there's Tony Jones right now. There's uh, Jam- Jamila Woods. There's Gemini. There's a Sat Rock. There's a lot of sisters out here who are talking. Uh, come, uh, got the mother conversation. It's God talk, but I'm saying the mother conversation all about who they are, who you are. So if you want to uplift yourself, then put something in yourself that, that's uplifting. What do you listen to when there's nothing going on? What are you, what are you feeding yourself? It's what are you eating? When you're at the table. What are you eating? Because if you don't eat on soul, if you ain't eating on soul food, then you ain't on some kind of food. And then when, you know, I, I pay attention to when we're feeling good about ourselves and we're riding high, we don't do anything spiritual. And if we go, oh, I'm feeling good. Oh, I'm, I, I'm a master at this. And then here comes the pendulum <laughs> to swing low. And when that pendulum comes, because you have not been feeding your soul, feeding your spirit, the car and the bar, 
You haven't been feeding this physical form. You haven't been feeding mm. your mind. What do you have to fall back on? So I suggest even when you flying high, birds flying high, feeling good by Nina Simone, always, always have some, always have a, a book to read or a song to sing because when it comes up out of your soul, that means that you know for sure you know who you are, but you always know that you know nothing. Mm. You know, but I can always say when you choose to do this medicine, because this medicine ain't no two, it's med- what do you have in your medicine bag? You know, can you go inward? And when something is going on, can something come? Can a song come up out of you? Can a word come up out of you? What is your mother conversation with yourself? What's your what 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 word sound do you have for yourself? See, this is a thing where you have to be able to look to to stand outside of yourself and really look to see exactly what you're doing, because you have to reprogram all those things. My mother told me you'll never be nothing. Okay, well, you know. But no, no, not the truth of me. I don't have to be what society says who I am. Just because you have a house, a car, don't mean you're successful. Don't mean you got no success because you got to find a way to pay them bills, make them bills, make them, and all of that. Mm -hmm. So there's two dispensations we find ourselves in, trying to get rid of something and trying to get something instead of just being. When you just be, Life unfolds. That's that infinite air consciousness. That's that omnipresence. That's that omnipotent. That's that omniscient. That's that omniopulence. Saying the only thing I got to do is be still and know. I ain't got to fight nothing because if you fight it, it's going to fight you. You ain't got to resist it. Look at it. If it comes up, there's something that you need to see. Look at it. I'm going to see because I'm going to embrace, bask you in love. I'm going to move through and rise above. I have fear, doubts, and worries just like everybody else, but I push through it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I don't care if I have to crawl up the steps. I don't care. Nothing comes before my spirituality. Nothing comes before the mothers in me. The mothers is my shepherd. I shall not want. There's Mm. nothing outside of me exists. Everything exists inside of me, and I stay inward, not outward. So when you see a sister glowing, she's radiating herself, her innerness, her sacredness. We don't see ourselves as sacred. We don't see ourselves as divine. If I don't see the divinity and the sacredness in myself, how can I see it in somebody else? We are sacred. Look up the word. Do the etymology of the word sacred. Do the etymology of the word divine. And it will show you who you are. Sacred and divine. Sacred and divine. When I think of divinity, I think Mm -hmm. about, I think about, when I think of sacred, I think about something that is not to be dealt with in any old kind of way. Okay. So do you see yourself as sacred? Do you see yourself as divine? Yes. Now, you know how long this has been my conversation since we've known each other. I'm always telling sisters about sacred and divinity, about being, about how powerful they are. I've been screaming this ever since I understood what it meant to come to love myself. And every day, it's a day of working and applying the medicine to loving myself unconditionally, loving myself without judgment, loving myself if I miss the mark. Because, you know, someone said the devil, but the devil just means that I lived backwards. 
<laughs> I like that, and you can always turn it around. You don't have to keep moving, and okay. that. you don't have to. <laughs> you know, but when this, when some, when you truly choose to make a shift in your life to transform and transmute, someone is going to come to assist you. That's just how the mothers operate. They will always say, you don't have to go through this by yourself. You come with your ancestors who want you to have the best and the greatest. But we were told that's taboo. But they worship their ancestors. Look at the dollar bill. Look at their currency. Mm -hmm. Who's on their currency? Are they living? No, dead person. They always talking about that. Look at the holidays. They are holidays. Who are they honoring on those days? People who are no longer in the physical form, right? Right. So how could our ancestors be taboo, but theirs not? So we've been shamed because we deal with our ancestors. We've been shamed because we don't deal with traditional church. We've been shamed of African spirituality. We've been saying, oh, well, you know, I, uh, they kill chickens. So does the uh, Kabbalahs. They kill chickens too. <laughs> but see, people don't know that. And Kabbalah is, <laughs> yeah, they do sacrifice. Oh, yeah. See, that's hidden. That's the part you don't know until you become a Kabbalah. Because I wove the red string. I went to the Kabbalah. And I've and we were doing something, I can't remember what the name was, but it was a sacrifice of a chicken. I'm like, oh, now, wait a minute. Here, I know this not true, oh, wow. but it is. Oh, yeah. Interesting. Totally. That's so interesting. You know, I've been through all the doors. <laughs> Kabbalah, Buddhism, Zen, Hinduism. And then I was told in my meditation to go back because I knew nothing about my people. Said, go back, you know nothing. I said, I said, thousands and thousands of, go back, you know nothing. I didn't even know how to find it. But I knew I had a friend and I called him and I asked him and I told him what was told me in my meditation. He gave me two names. Bobby Hammett, Phil Valentine, and the guy, um, he gave me the word melanin first. He told me to look up melanin first. Richard Thomas. I think it's Richard Thomas or Dr. Richard Thomas or Dr. Well, I can't think of his name. I began to devour it. And I found out what melanin was truly all about. It's the dark matter. It's the dark conscious. It's that mother of shame. It's who we are. It gives us the ability to leap in the air. It gives us the ability to do three, four, five time, things at one time. It gives us the ability to be great. That means that we are divinity and we are sacred because we are melanated beings. Mm. That's what gives us the ability to be and to do and to see. The first eye to feel. We've always had those gifts, always. But because we were shamed and damned and dumbed down, we were we hit them. But it's our melanin that makes us great. The dark matter, the dark consciousness, the black dot, that black hole, that portal, that pineal gland that doesn't like the light that sits in the darkness. Because if you sit in darkness, you grow powerful. The light is just the information. That's all it is. The sun is even black. But they won't tell you that. You got to know that. They have a melanin conference. We're not invited. <laughs> wow. So melanin is like a... a a, a, a superpower. That's our superpower. It is a superpower. It's our superpower. Do you know melanin is five hundred and ten dollars for an ounce, a gram, a melanin? Yeah, I, I've seen this. <laughs> I can send you the the code, and you can take put, put it in Google, and it comes up. Why do you think so many people come up missing? Women, sisters, children, 
Melanin is in our breath. Melanin is in our eyes. Melanin is in our brain. Melanin is all through us. We are hot commodity. We don't know how powerful we are. But getting back to the chakra on the mind, popping that lock, holding the vision of who we are, keeping our own sacred space, knowing that we're sacred and divine, knowing that we create, we erect, we radiate, we generate, and we're keepers. But what are you a keeper of? Are you a keeper of the keys? Are you a keeper of the secrets? Are you a keeper of the sacreds? Are you a keeper of the song? Are you a keeper of the temple? What are you a keeper of? Well, how do you generate? How do you radiate? How do you erect? How do you create? So before you can Mm -hmm. even overstand the grand rising of the matriarch, these are the things that we got to shift in ourselves. So that we could be ready for this ashe, this energy that's so powerful. Some people won't be able to accept it. Some people won't be able to be in it. As our minister SCG 13 said, these are exciting and magnificent times to be on this planet. To usher in this mm-hmm. golden age of who we truly are and what we are. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. We carry oh, the one. No, no offense. If you don't carry the one, you don't. You are. <laughs> you gotta have a one. <laughs> That's the only thing I gotta say. And I'm gonna leave that right there. No, what was you gonna say? <laughs> <laughs> I was just agreeing with you. It's definitely a powerful time. There is a lot of shifts taking place. If you can be anywhere in the world and and feel and see weather changes and just things shifting. And I my question is when it comes to the weather, I kinda I feel like I know the answer already. Yeah, I'm still a need to ask the question. When it comes to how the weather is and the, the, the changes in the, in the frequency and how things are, are going. Is, is this having to do with karma and our relationship with our mothers also? Yes. When you heal, the, when we heal ourselves, we heal the planet. Mm-hmm. You can't keep raping the planet. You can't keep poisoning the planet. You can't keep putting paper down. You can't keep putting smog in the air. You can't keep putting oil in the ocean. You can't keep continuing to do these things without some repercussion. Mm-hmm. Do we honor the earth? How do we treat her? Right. Are you just throwing trash? So if we're not treating her well, thank you. If we don't heal ourselves, we can't heal our mothers. Fannie Lou Hammer said, you could tell a race of beings by its sisters, by its melanated sisters. If you can want to cripple a nation, who do you grab first? No women. All righty then. But Yubaka Hill says, the women united can never be defeated. The women united can never be divided. <laughs> we all need each other. We all have a piece of the puzzle. But it, we have to want to be. We have to want to be a part of the puzzle. We have to want to be able to be healed. I'm telling the sister, we can heal. We heal each other. We start with ourselves. We start with our community. No, we, excuse me. We start with our mother ourselves, our sisters, I meet our family sisters, and then we go to the community and we spread that. No matter what a sister is saying, no matter what she's thinking, no matter how she acted, because guess what? She don't have to know the truth of who she is. You know the truth. Just as well as she hates you, she can love you. And she ain't got to know what you're doing. You are the transformer. You are the transmuter. So transform and transmute. 
Yeah, we can shift this energy. It don't take all. It takes a few of us. Free your mind. What's it going to be? Who are you going to be? How you want to be? It's up to you. But I can guarantee you, we all start holding the vision. There's nothing that they can do. Stop telling them, all people all on Facebook, stop telling them what you're going to do and just do it. Right. You need to have some secrecy back into what? Sacredness, because sacredness is not for everybody to see. If you're doing something for a sacred sure? cause, it doesn't have to be publicly it doesn't have to be publicly announced. It shouldn't be publicly announced. Because when I really think about it, these actions that they call themselves trying to do in depopulation or whatever, um, but it's always announced. I mean, here and take, you have a whistleblower and they put some information out, but once it gets to flowing, don't you think they like regroup and recalibrate and be like, hold up, you got to change some things because word got out. So it makes me think. Well, they want it out. Right, so fear to to and to push fear to keep you kind of like just twirling. Yeah. Oh, I need to do this. Oh, but there's no, also another. There's also another secret to that too, because if I share with you what I'm doing, I'm burning off my karma. That's why they write books. Why do you think a person write a book? A person writes a book because if they share just a little bit to shift your energy, then guess what? That's a piece of burnt karma. There's all kind of ways to soften and burn karma. So that's why they write the books. That's why they put it in the movies. Because they want to give you enough truth where they where you think that they didn't give you something. But see, we don't, well, we don't believe it because we don't. It's a lie. But that's just enough truth to soften and burn their karma. Because they're using our magic. They don't have any magic. We got the magic. We got the magic dust. It's all in us. They're just using our principles to achieve whatever they think that they can because they can't get nowhere because they can't do nothing because they don't live, they're not righteous and they don't have a soul. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And as you say, it's a distraction. They keep, they got you so caught up in what's going on outside that you can't go inside. So I said, I don't care about whatever they got. Oh, oh, well, you know, they're taking the books out the library. Well, you know, they got this going on. Oh, you, I don't entertain any of that. If you want the books, buy them. All they have to do is switch the vision. You can get two or three sisters right now, and we can change this whole planet with just prayer, the mothers, and a vision. Because the mothers are about justice, harmony, and balance. Mm-hmm. Yeah. 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 They come to write whatever needs to be right it. And the only thing you gotta do is when you know the truth, be the truth. Be the medicine. Live the medicine. Wow. It sounds so simple. <laughs> <laughs> it is. We make everything hard. Oh, girl, you, you have you ever seen people? Oh, girl, you know, healing, healing is hard. Healing is pain. No pain, no gain. I don't have to go through pain to be healed. That's just what you teach. That's what someone has said. And we all buy into what somebody has said. Mm-hmm. Pay attention. Go outside. Everybody looks just the same. Stretch, all the sisters just the same. Stretch pants and a top. Mm-hmm. Why is everybody looking the same? Who told us to come outside in exercise clothes? Because isn't that what those are? Exercise clothes? Yes. That's what it is. So now we wear exercise clothes outside. Every day. <laughs> Nothing wrong with it. With how you dress is your business. But pay, I, I'm serious. I went to the doctor and I'm like, everybody got on the same exact thing, just different colors and but everybody dressed the same. So who determines the who determines how you live your life? 
You know, my sister mm-hmm. said, why you got to wear this? I said, where? I wear nothing but African garb. So I don't, you know, that's not who I am. That's, I choose to. It's a choice. I'm not saying that you can do whatever you want to do. But how do you choose to live your life? How do you need approval and validation all your life? Sisters, pop the lock. Mm. Free your mind. And everything else will follow. But that's the vision I'm holding. That's the vision I'm praying to the mothers. Pop these locks for who all want them popped. It's definitely a pop of the lock. Definitely a pop of the lock because our minds are being taken at so many different angles, whether it's through fashion, whether it's through so called fashion, because that's really not that fashionable unless you know you're a fitness instructor. That's kind of what you do. So you just be like, I got all kinds of fitness outfits, you know. <laughs> but I'm just saying, just the popping of the lot. I see that happening, and I know that it needs to happen some more. <laughs> you know, and sometimes mm-hmm. the lock is pop, but we still wearing the helmet anyway. So we want to get out. So we're gonna see the helmet. Yes, yes. That's the vision mm-hmm. we're gonna hold. We're gonna hold that vision of the helmet being stopped to the ground no more. Yes, yes. And women being uplifted, being uplifted. Mm-hmm. And like you said, it doesn't have to be in words. It could just be in thought because I we all know thoughts are transferable. You can you can feel when somebody's thinking bad about you. If you put enough thought into it, so you can yeah. use that energy for good. And that would be good for what? Karma. That's a way of burning up karma mm-hmm. too, yes? Yeah. By yes. having good thoughts about people. Thoughts. Okay. Words. Okay. About nothing. Actions. About nothing. Deeds and that. reactions. But she is about Word. something. See, that's just it. Word. Because we go back to the field nigga and the house nigga. We got to see where it, where it's originating from and break those generational curses. You know, whatever your mama experienced, you're going to experience. Perfect example. I live in a house and everybody's Christian. I ain't no such thing as no ancestors up in here. But guess what? <laughs> I feed my ancestors on a daily basis. When I take my food, I take a portion of my food and I push it to the side. That's my portion to the ancestors. You ain't got to know what I'm doing. I ain't got to tell you. Right. It doesn't have to be so elaborate. Like, okay, here's the water. Here's the, right. corner, here's the corner. Yes. There's the little staff. There's my... <laughs> wow. Yeah. I mean, when I came here, you know, I had all kind of things. And I was told I had a skull and it was devil worship in it. So they was going to throw it away. But my, lucky my cousin was here and she took it and I asked her to take it. You know, Anything that's not understood is devil worshiping. Lives backwards. You know, African spirituality, Bhutan, Ifa, uh, Santeria, uh, Kandemblo, uh, Congo, you know, um, what do they call it with the uh, beating of the sticks? You know, anything that's African spirituality, we want to say that is bad or it's evil. Because it's not understood. We don't have a great understanding or grasp of who we are. Now, I could tell you what, play a drum. And that drum will take you into a trance. That drum, I ask myself, why did I ever do a drug? Because when that drum get to playing, you get to feeling that spirit, the black dove, the Holy Spirit, the black dove, and that spirit take over. You have for days. Mm-hmm. Go into a good meditation, and you go into a deep meditation, and you get initiated, you get transformed and transmuted. Birds flying high, you know how I feel. Breathe, drifting on by, <laughs> feeling good. <laughs> yes. So I'm telling you, when you truly are in tune, you're in tune with yourself, and you're in tune with that spirit realm. 
baby, honey, please. You, that's a high that's undescribable. Mm. I'm so thankful for Why do you think they stopped us from drumming? Yes, at night. Why do you think they stopped us? Because they realized that that drum talks, that drum communicates. Right, and it was giving us strength. Yes. Mm, mm, mm. Messages. Lifting us up, inspiring us to be great. So I tell sisters, when you want to get a drum, go hear some drumming. Dance, do the spiral dance, as Shabaka Hill says. Sisters, we got a beat. Our mother's mothers and our mother's mothers and our, all that is a beat. But if you can't see who you if you can't see who you are, then you can't see anybody else. But I'm holding the vision for every sister. Because I can see far and wide to all those who want it. That's exactly what we are here for. And I'm so grateful for the sacred space. I'm grateful to you and I'm grateful to our minister. SCG 13, and all of our ministers and all of our sisters, we are here for each other. We're holding a vision. This space is here to help us raise our vibration, our level of vibrational energy, that love, level of vibrational energy. We're so grateful to be here in this sacred space tonight. Thank you, thank you, thank you for all who are listening. You can go to our website at www.mastervibration13.com. We have a well-worded vision of what it is that we are here to do and what we look to inspire in others and what we look to build for ourselves so we can have places for us to go and receive guidance on our journeys. What is that? If you feel moved to cash app S E G thirteen love. And we thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.